Mute if you can, please. I declare the meeting open and welcome you to this special meeting of council. The recording of this council meeting will be available to the public on council's website for a minimum period of six months. In accordance with council policy, I will now ask council staff to confirm that the recording has commenced. Thank you, Michael. I'd first of all like to acknowledge that we meet today on the land of the Malakadee people, the traditional custodians of this land. Our Aboriginal people have taken care of our waterways and our land for over 40,000 years in Tasmania. We pay our respects to their customs, to their elders, past, present and emerging. Um, welcome to the people that are tuning in at um, home this evening to watch uh, this special meeting of council. And I would also like to uh, go through and welcome those councillors that are with us this evening. Um, here in the council chambers, we have um, uh, Councillor Campbell and Councillor Clark. And online this evening, we have Deputy Mayor Sally Doyle, Councillor Gibson, Councillor Lovell and Councillor O'May. Um, I'll just hand over to uh, welcome our general manager, Jason, and ask Jason just to introduce um, the staff that are here um, in, the, in the chambers tonight. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. We've got uh, Matthew Grimps here, our Director of Local, uh, Legal and uh, Governance Services, and Mike Blazer, our ITC officer, who I'll thank for coming in off leave to support us um, for this session, this special meeting. Thank you, Michael. That's dedication for you. Um, so we go on to item two of the agenda, which is the non-attendance. And we have two apologies from councillors, uh, one councillor Prince and the other is councillor Newell, who are unable to attend this evening. There are no leave of absence and there is no absent. And I'll just um, ask councillors for item three. Is there any item on the agenda where you need to declare an interest? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right. So we will proceed straight. No. Sorry? No. Oh, no, you don't. All right. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Uh, we will now proceed. Um, straight to the uh, first report, which is the petition regarding the process undertaken by Hewitt Valley Council for recruiting and appointing the new general manager. Agenda number 9.001 forward slash 22. And I'd just like to bring to the attention of all councillors, just to make sure that you have received a, um, an amendment to the recommendation um, from Councillor Campbell. Um, can, has everybody received that and is aware of that for this particular? I wasn't report? until I got here. Okay. No, so. I wasn't. I'm not aware of that. Okay. All right. Um, what uh, what we'll do is we'll actually discuss that uh, item, obviously, when it gets moved, and uh, to consider the inclusion of that information um, from the amendment that Councillor Campbell has put forward. Um, but uh, Councillor Campbell has been working with um, the Director of Legal and Governance um, during the day um, so that it does comply um, with uh, with any legislation, et cetera, or regulations. So thank you very much. So I did email yep. councillors with yep. the, um, with the um, amended, amended yep. motion. Yeah, that was, uh, what time did you do that? Uh, that was 10 to 5 when I received um, oh, okay. Spoken to Matthew. Yeah, sure. So yeah. you'll have an electronic version of it, but it's it's not a complicated amendment um, to the recommendation. So um, you probably don't need to have it in front of you to read it. Um, so we'll we'll deal with that um, once the motion has been moved. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I refer councillors to the recommendation of this report, please. And uh, therefore, do I have a councillor to move a motion? Yes, Councillor Campbell. Mm, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I'd like to move the recommendation and I would like to submit um, an amended motion with um, paragraphs C and D included. And I'll just read those out yes, thank you. for the councillor's benefit. Um, C now reads, submissions received by the closing date are to be placed on the council website as soon as practical after that date but no later than Tuesday, 1 February 2022. The submissions placed on the website are to include the name of the person making the submission, 
However, personal address and contact details and any potential defamatory invitations will be redacted. And D, the date for registration to attend the public meeting is to be made available on the council website at least seven days before the public meeting. And the reasons for including that is just for um, information for the community so that there's no misunderstanding of what um, we're trying to achieve and the whole community have the opportunity to see um, when those submissions come up and what date they can apply to come into um, register. Sure. Can I have a second, uh, a seconder, please, for that amended motion? I'll yes, Councillor Clark will second it. Thank you very much. Would you like to speak to the amended motion? Would you have further to add? Um, thank you, Mayor. Look, if basically, um, when people out there are talking about the public meeting, I just thought it provides council with the opportunity to show that we're being, you know, transparent. We're operating with good governance, and I thought by including these two paragraphs with the help of. Um, Matthew, um, that it actually um, shows that we're demonstrating um, our efforts to provide the community with as much information as possible, so that you know council can show that we're you know we're making commitment to that. So that was basically why I just wanted to include that. All right, lovely. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else that would like to talk for the amended motion? Yes, Kelly. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Clark, and then I'll come to you, Councillor O'Mahe. Councillor Clark. Um, just, uh, I, yes, I think it's um, a really good idea to put that in there because it gives some um, plenty of openness and and clarity to um, to the motion. And, um, yeah, I fully support it. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Um, does anybody wish to speak against the motion? That's against the motion. Would anybody like to speak for the motion, Councillor O'May? Or do you have a question? Uh, yes, Mayor. I don't see any problem with the motion. I think the more open and transparent we can make the process, um, the community certainly uh, deserves um, every opportunity to uh, to understand what's going on. Um, the only question I'd like to ask is, um, is in relation to the public meeting proper um, and under the current conditions of COVID and whatnot that we're having, um, are, are there, what are we going to do as a uh, council in regards to um, having a public meeting and what sort of safety regime can we administer or um, provide mm. in regards to um, safety issues in sure. of COVID? Sure. So um, I, I think I can answer that and, and then um, our general manager and um, our director could add further information if they wish to. Um, but as in all meetings that we hold here um, at council, there is a process where you must book a place um, because you're right, there are uh, restricted numbers because of COVID and those restrictions still remain. And every venue that council owns has a maximum number of persons um, that uh, can be within our public buildings. And so just like the annual general meeting that we held recently, which was in the town hall, that was a online booking process, or you could call the council and they would assist you in actually booking a seat. Um, and that is that is absolutely necessary and part of uh, what WorkSafe would expect from um, the local government sector. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, it does, Mayor, but uh, uh, the only thing that I'd suggest is um, uh, the ability to uh, for the for people to be able to attend or participate. So uh, uh, it just leaves a bit of a cloud over the process in my view that um, you know, like you just can't have um, any more than a certain number of people there, and it's going to be difficult for it to be a a uh, meeting where people can participate in any way or form in in any numbers if they chose to. I doubt yeah. that. We 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 we're bound we're bound by obviously public health 
state government public health orders. And um, so uh, we, we live in a, a time where most members of the public would appreciate that um, local government is the same as any other operating business, that we've got to have the numbers. What we have got in this report, you may have noticed, um, is that uh, it is asked, the report asked council to consider recording of the meeting um, and uh, whether that is video recording or voice recording um, is actually in this report. So it's actually in this report, it, at the officer actually uh, says that we, we should be providing um, one of those formats because even though, as you're right, only a certain amount of people will be able to fill that room and be able to participate or simply observe, um, there will be recording. Well, we need to agree on it, but there will should be recording in place so that um, people can watch it after, if that's the case. Yeah, no, that's fine, Mayor. I'm just concerned. Yeah. My concern yeah. was the fact that I just wouldn't yeah. like to be um, people come in and criticise council after the fact yeah. that we haven't provided an opportunity. That's all. So um, yeah. I just want to provide a, a, a good process so that everybody yeah. can be content and happy that it has been open and transparent and yeah. they have had the opportunity to participate. Uh, yeah. So they're not going to be um, going over old ground down the line. Yes, I understand. Th and thank you for that, Councillor O'Bay. Um, well, there's a question from uh, Deputy... Can I ask a question along the same lines? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, except that to say, um, Deputy Mayor Doyle has got her hand up to ask a question, I believe. Can I come back to you, Councillor Gibson? Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes. Deputy Mayor Doyle? Um, yes, through you, Mayor. Um, on the same line as Mark's, but what about if councillors can't attend? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, and that would be what the, the reason would be because of COVID or? Yeah, yeah, COVID restrictions with family uh -huh. or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, we um, might have to look at that one. Okay, hmm. so uh, through, through to um, either Jason or Matthew or both of you, yeah. um, clearly, we don't have this facility uh, that we are using now That's down correct. in the town hall um, to have teams, that is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, would it have to be an apology? Through yes. there, I'm just uh, consult with Mike on yes. the teams that we can. We can do this yeah. teams? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to attend online and listen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I'm, I'm happy go. with that because, yeah, because children won't have had their second vac vaccine uh, um, immunisation or whatever you want to call yes, it. Yes, vaccination. They yeah, they won't have had theirs by then. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that answers your question that yep. you would be able to participate as by joining via teams. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jason and Matthew. Uh, sorry, Jason and Michael. Uh, now, Councillor Gibson, you have a question. Councillor Gibson? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot to unmute. Uh, <laughs> just, it was, <laughs> it was uh, just with regard to Councillor O'May's question and whether bigger venues have been considered. Hmm. Uh, such as the Franklin Palais or Signet Town Hall? Yeah, or St James. The St James Hall is very big. I don't know. I don't, and I, it's a question of how many extra numbers that would provide. Mm. I'm not quite yeah. sure what the numbers in the town hall are, but it's just a question of whether they have been considered or not. Uh, I I don't... I'm going to have to go through but to Matthew. Do you know if any of the earlier discussions, the other venues were discussed? Through, through you, man, no. Mm. Uh, one of the particular issues is that the opportunity for technology to assist the meeting is here. Mm. Mm. It's not available in the other facilities. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was the consideration of this venue was because of access to technology and technicians or a technician. Well, yeah, yeah. But more so the technology. Yeah. Does that 
Does that um, sound reasonable, Councillor Gibson? I guess I would. I'd like to see if there's a strong response. Um, I'd like to the possibility of that to be reconsidered and the um, technology to be sorted as it always can be um, in a simpler form, maybe just uh, a straight recording or, or whatnot. But it would be good, I think, if there is a strong response to say, look, on the basis of that response, we would like we're going to um, go to a bigger venue. If All we could right. amend that, or add that in. Okay, I, I'm just not sure whether we have got with you know to put that into a. What is what's the is there in, what's the impact of putting that into a recommendation if we can't deliver on it though? That's the trouble. I yeah I don't I don't agree. I it's there. We didn't get a full house at the AGM. So just have it in the town halls where it's meant to be. Three in there with yeah. I, mean, I think if, if if the word is consider, I think that leaves that pretty pretty uh, open. We okay. three in there. I'm, yeah. I'm happy for us just to take it as a uh, consider options, and I think we'd need to play out the IT part, particularly with. Uh, Sally also now needing to be online. We need mm. to make sure that we can, as a priority, get all our mm. councillors. So did everybody hear um, the general manager just then? Responding? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mayor, I just yeah. think I agree that we just should um, uh, see, if I may, through you, um, what Council Gibson's uh, suggestion is, um, it's probably not going to work out because of the IT and whatnot, but at least we can um, put it on the table that we did explore the pos the opportunity or the uh, potential of that and it didn't pan out or it did pan out or whatnot. I just want to tick all the boxes if we can in this process to make sure that we've, um, we're not going to come under criticism further down the track. So. Okay, so I just want to confirm we're we're, ta we're we're not changing we're not amending the motion here to reflect that. It's just that the general manager has taken it on board and he will talk with the IT um, relevant persons about what can be considered beyond the town hall. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So to be. Oh, um, oh, you are saying amen. Well, I'm just wondering, do we need to amend? Because it's saying here that uh, the the motion is that we um, that should be have it at the Hewanville Town Hall. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. or an alternate. So maybe just have it as an alternate yeah. option. Yeah. Would be would be. Well, you'd have to. Would would be considered should numbers demand it. Would will be and, sort of, and technology can and be technology support. Yeah, technology support is uh, is capable. Yeah, uh, only because I yeah. might it might be great to have you know another yeah. twenty or thirty people in the in yeah. the facility, but yeah. then we miss out on the broader mass because we don't have the technology yeah. support. Yeah, and it definitely came through. I, that. I totally agree. We don't okay. really miss that. Yeah. No, no, okay. good, good, because that came through very fairly strongly about. Continuing the recording capability. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I just suggest some wording for that, Mayor? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, with that change of wording, it would be B reading public meeting be held on Friday, 4th February 2022 at 6 pm at the Hillfield Town Hall, in brackets, or an alternative option to be considered should numbers demand is technology support is available, close brackets, and then continues on regarding the process. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And, and also to clarify, Mayor, that uh, paragraph C from the recommendation would be also become E. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are there any other, any other questions at this point in time? Yeah, the only other question I'd like to put to that, um, Mayor, if we may, uh, if there was to be a larger old venue um, suggested that uh, whether that's wise uh, under current COVID um, 
uh, criteria that we should be encouraging bigger congregations of people um, and not suggesting any anything otherwise than uh, trying to uh, keep all the people happy. But at the same time, we've got to be very careful what we're uh, trying to encourage here. So, um, and the Please. time when that is. So, uh, it's a little bit difficult to please all the people all the time here. I know we're in, un we're in untrodden ground with this bloody virus. So, uh, that's right. Be very careful on uh, on what we're trying to promote here. So, uh, I just want to take that as on board as a note. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you going to close, or are you asking a question? I've got a question. Sure. Um, I sent um, an email today um, to the general manager Matthew um, after talking at the audit panel about the issue of COVID and mm -hmm. ongoing impacts on council, and I just think it's important that all councillors have the opportunity to discuss because we're all a little bit, you know, ambivalent about not so much about what's happening, but we need to sort of be sure, you know, what our stand is with the community. And that was something that was raised at the audit panel. So there was a suggestion that we might do a 10 to 15 minute discussion at the next workshop. Okay. Which I think it was the 19th, was it? So that it gives us a chance mm -hmm. to talk together about, mm -hmm. because we can go around in circles about different things, mm -hmm. but we need a definite stand on how we're going to manage COVID. Okay. So, yeah. so what Councillor Campbell was saying, alerting to, was that um, as a council we'll be discussing our approach to COVID, you know, the council's approach to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, around the 19th, is that right? The 19th? Yeah, it works the 19th? Scheduled. It will be scheduled? It's already so scheduled. It's already scheduled? Okay, the 19th. So we can talk more in detail around COVID, COVID plans, etc. and uh, entertain the discussion about the public meeting in that process as well at the same time. Uh, are there any other final questions? Right, okay. Um, look, I I just wanted to raise in regards to E, oh, sorry, in regards to B, um, uh, we've got a start time, but not a finish time. And uh, even though in the report it does say uh, maximum, I think, it's two hours. Is that right? Within the uh, agenda adopted under attachment B yeah. is paragraph E of the motion. Yeah, okay. So um, I will talk to E in a moment, which sort of works in with what I'm trying to say now, is that the um, independent chairs that uh, I discussed with you that I would approach, I have done that. And a there needs to be an absolute finish time. And so either we, we leave it at 6 p.m., um, knowing that in the document that, um, the agenda document, correct, that Matthew was just referring to, it actually says two hours maximum. Um, it's just that the public need to know when the, what the latest time is that that event will finish as well. Mm. So I just wanted to bring that into the conversation. It is documented in the agenda, but it's not in the recommendation. But I just wanted to, for you to be aware of that. Mm. Uh, in relation to E, I spoke to both Sue Smith and Lynn Mason, both very experienced chairs uh, and very experienced in local government. And they are both free on the suggested date um, for the public meeting. And um, they are uh, would both um, have said that they would be uh, interested in um, being the independent chairs. So, of course, there's a process that we need to do as far as formal communications go, um, but I wanted to come back to you um, with those two names and that they have both said that they would, um, would consider doing that public meeting. And that relates to E. Independent facilitator. Your question, Councillor Doyle. Yeah, I'm happy to support um, Councillor Campbell's first recommendation. I just don't see the need to have to add in moving to another venue. So I'll support Councillor Campbell's, but I can't support an amendment to that. Okay, right. 
Um, how do we want to treat that then in that case? Um, Matthew, how would you advise? Because it wasn't part of um, Councillor Campbell's amendment anyway. So we go straight to the vote without that change? Well, there may be the opportunity mm. uh, for um, Councillor Gibson to move that as an amendment to the motion. Okay, and then to see if it gets seconded and get it and gets up. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll do I'm that. Happy to, I'm happy to move that as the motion. Yeah. Okay. As an amendment, if, if, if appropriate. Okay. So we do that now. We take that amendment now. Uh, someone to second um, uh, Councillor Gibson's uh, amendment for uh, this is about the venue. Which was simply to consider if there's a strong response yeah. to see if there's a, a bigger venue that can be, assuming that we can um, still live stream. Yeah, okay, so that, that's what that is. So uh, a seconder. I'll second that. You'll second that? That's right. Sorry. Got one on the, we've got one on the floor already. So <laughs> thank you. That, yeah, thank you very much, Matthew. Okay, we need someone else to second it then. Uh, Mayor, I wouldn't like to second it um, unless it, it had the wording in in regards to uh, safety in regards to COVID. Um, so uh, uh, taking COVID I, restrictions into account. Yeah. I agree with Mark on that. Okay, yeah, you, you understood the bigger picture of what Councillor May was trying to communicate that it wasn't just public health, it was a bit greater than public health? Councillor Gibson? Taking the whole thing, yeah, taking the COVID situation into account. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, just getting Matthew to work on that. <laughs> that will have to be read out first. So, Mayor, as I uh, pushed out earlier, the mm -hmm. amendment, as I understand, and Councillor Gibson's happy with this, a public meeting be held on Friday, 4 February 2022 at 6 p.m. at the Hillville Town Hall. Brackets are an alternate option to be considered should numbers demand it, technology support is available, and taking the COVID situation into account regarding the process of. Uh, yeah, I think it just leaves the door open. That's, thank, that's very good. Thanks, Matthew. All right, so we um, will vote on on that then. That's the uh, Councillor Gibson amendment. Um, all those in favour, please raise your. Oh, you're going to have to. So I'm going to have to go individually through to you. Sorry, I can't see. Okay, um, Deputy Mayor Doyle. Um, so I'll put the motion. Um, Deputy Mayor De 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 Deputy Mayor Doyle. How are you voting for or against? Against. Um, Councillor Gibson. I better go no. four, I think. Yeah, I know. I just had to ask, sorry, for the record. Councillor Campbell. Oh, yep. Um, Councillor Lovell. Four. Councillor Clark. Sorry, Councillor Obey. Four, Mayor. Councillor Clark? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. And the Mayor is for, so that is um, carried. Thank you. All right, now we go back to Councillor Campbell's amendment. Um, do you have any, we've discussed that to the end of the degree. Yes. Um, do you have any closing comments? No, thank you, Mayor. No, okay, all right. I'll put that to the vote then. Um, so, Deputy Mayor Doyle, how do you vote for Councillor Campbell's amendment? For or against? For. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gibson, for or against? For. Councillor Campbell. For. Councillor Lovell. For. Councillor May. For, Mayor. Councillor Clark. Just so that we're clear, yes. we're voting on the amended motion. Yeah, that one that came. I just didn't know whether Councillor Doyle understood that. Yeah, that's all. yeah. Um, yes, yeah, yep. I'm for. Yeah. And the Mayor says four, so that's carried. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.
So we go through to the final report for the night. Very green waste weekend. Agenda number 17.001 forward slash 22. Before I go to my part of this report, I will refer over to our general manager, Jason, who just has a bit of an amendment for number nine of that report to talk to. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, um, under the engagement section, item nine, we've um, put down the intention to advertise on the 12th and the 19th of January. Just a little bit of uncertainty. Joanne's left. Oh, we've lost. Oh, we need to record the time. Are you right there, Matthew? Oh, it's 30. Yep. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, so yes, we've um, noted there that um, we're advertised on the 12th and the 19th. Well, we still may be able to, but uh, we, we may have missed the deadline with the human news. Um, failing the 12th being a date, we'll, we'll put something in on the 26th, which is still prior to the event, yeah. mm -hmm. and we'll give people uh, the knowledge that um, it is available. So I don't think we've lost anything there. Yeah, but it's, it's still two weeks. It's just a different two weeks. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So and we'll obviously do all of the other Facebook uh, advertising, etc. Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Wonderful. So just clarification, the general manager, so that you're making that the 19th and 26th, or you're still leaving in the 19th, the 12th, 19th. Um, if we can get the 12th, yeah, we'll yeah, get to the 12th. Yeah, great. Um, just to give everyone that advanced knowledge sure. um, of it coming up. But if we do, if we sure. don't have the opportunity to the 12th, yeah. we'll do another one on the 26th yeah. after the 19th. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Thanks. Yeah. And sorry, my introduction may have confused that because I think I used the word amended. Yeah. But I should just add information on that. Yeah. 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 All right, so um, I'll refer councillors to the recommendation of this report, please. Do I have a councillor to move a motion? Councillor Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll take you as a seconder, Deputy. Councillor yep. Campbell, do you have any opening remarks? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity, particularly as we are um, mindful of water fires, and I think it gives a good message as council um to the locals that you know we're willing to do something to support them and uh, deal with their green waste and hopefully that will bring about some changes um in seeing that we're working with the community to do something positive thank you um any other councillors would, would any council like to speak for the motion please first yeah. sorry mayor Councillor may yes uh, yes uh, Councillor May? Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> Can I have Councillor May first and then I'll have Councillor Gibson, thank you. Yeah, yes, May. Sure. I'd, re I'd really like to um, reiterate uh, Councillor Campbell's uh, comments in regards to uh, bushfires. We've really got to be proactive this year. We've had so much rain and so much growth and we're looking like getting more rain again on Friday, which is only going to stimulate things again. So um, I'm very much in support of Councillor Campbell's comments and and believe that Council really should um, get some roadside slashing done as a matter of priority um, and lead by example in regards to the community cleaning up any fire hazards that are about um, anywhere. So um, anyway, that's just my comments, man. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gibson. Yes, that uh, uh, similar comments to Councillor May. The only thing I might add would be that uh, we use this as much as possible as a awareness. Um, you know, advertise it pretty heavily, and uh, as far as general um, awareness about keeping getting ready for bushfires in in every season. Uh, Councillor Doyle. Oh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, I think this was Joanne's um, requested this. Totally um, support. We, we do have to look at our roadside slashing as well. But, um, yeah, fully support this. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak um, against the motion? No, Mayor. I didn't think there would be. Um, <laughs> Uh, look, I, I've just got a just a response. Um, Council would be aware that our officers uh, put together a six-month program on bushfire awareness and preparedness 
Uh, we've been talking about it for the last couple of um, council meetings. It's a monthly program that they do with the Tasmanian Fire Service. And so um, they're doing they're doing a lot around communications in that area. And uh, but I agree this is a great opportunity as the officer has uh, outlined to actually record the volume um, of what occurs on this particular date, which is uh, once again, it's this uh, the council's approach, um, a refreshing approach to collecting data and um, using it um, effectively for our planning in the in the future and and what things cost us and how we can communicate that information better to the community as well. So I thank very much um, for Lockie. Um, our Director of Infrastructure taking this on board immediately when it was asked by councillors at the last council meeting and doing it so quickly, um, being very responsive. And I uh, just want to acknowledge that. Um, Councillor Campbell, closing. Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. I think it's all being said and I think it's very positive. All right, lovely. I'll put the motion then. Um, all, uh, all those in favour? So Deputy Mayor Doyle, for or against? For. Councillor Gibson, for or against? For. Thank you. Councillor Campbell, for or against? Councillor Lovell has uh, left the meeting. Councillor O'May, for or against? Uh, for, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Clark, for or against? For, Mayor. Thank you. And the Mayor is for. That's all councillors present and the motion is carried. Thank you very much. All right. So that concludes our reports for the evening. And the special meeting closed at 5.36pm. 5.36pm. Thank you very much, councillors, and thank you very much, Jason, Matt and Michael. Appreciate that. See you thank next you. Bye. See, See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.